So my name's uh, Chris Gilchrist. I'm CEO of ASX Listed, uh, South Arts uh, Potash Limited. Uh, once we was past the legals, uh, let me tell you about the company. We've, uh, we actually own three mining licenses. Uh, we bought them from the German government in 2017. These are located in the former East Germany. Uh, they were granted to the East German state mining company prior to German reunification in the 1990s. Uh, but they were never mined, but they are virgin potash uh, areas. I'll show you a map in a moment. Uh, the licenses are unique because they are perpetual in nature. Normally, a mining license you get for 20 years, and you, if you behave yourself, you get it for another 10, and so on and so forth. These are perpetual licenses. We can keep them forever. Uh, we can sell them. We can assign them, etc. So it gives us enormous uh, flexibility. Uh, they carry no rentals or commitments uh, regarding what we're going to spend or how long it's going to take us, and they are completely royalty-free. Now, why are they so good? And the reason is that they were granted by the former communist state to the former state mining company, and when they were granted, royalties and other such things didn't enter the equation. And we bought them, and those conditions carried with the licenses. Um, we also, in addition to getting the three licenses, we, we bought, uh, it came as a part of the package, the results of an extensive exploration program in the entire basin, which includes the results from uh, over 300 deep drill holes. Uh, each drill hole today would cost about 2.5 million euro, so we've, uh, we've got all the data from these as well. And we, we bought the licenses and the uh, information for a total of 1.3 million euro. Uh, the, we brought the data from the drill holes to Micon International here in the UK, who do specialize in converting uh, former Soviet-type resources to JORC or to 43101. And we've established a total inferred resource of 5.3 billion tons of potash resource, containing 10.6 uh, percent K2O, which equates to 567 million tons of K2O, or 900 million tons of potential uh, potash. Very quickly, the Board of Management comprises a good uh, mixture of financial and technical skills. Our chairman is Ian Farmer, who was formerly the CEO of Lonmin, the world's third largest platinum producer. Uh, myself, uh, Chris Gilchrist, I was formerly with De Beers and Anglo for most of my career, and I took charge of the Cleveland Potash Mine in the UK, uh, which was later sold by Menorco to Israel Chemicals. And I continued as an uh, MD for a couple of years, and I became head of Israel Chemicals Technical Committee uh, as well. So we know a good bit already about potash. Uh, we've got two Australian directors because we are required to do so under our ASX listing. Uh, and we've got uh, a few German-speaking directors. So uh, we've got four out of six of our directors based in Europe, and we're actually shifting momentum uh, gradually to Europe from Australia. In terms of the corporate snapshot, we've got a market cap around about $72 million. This time last year, it was $8 million. We raised $10 million against a market cap of eight. Uh, share price is about $0.16. Cents. We started the year at four and a half. So we've got a bunch of... Happy shareholders right now. Uh, we're using uh, Hartley's, Euros Hartley's in Australia, and Sencos here in the UK, and both have been very supportive. Uh, so, in terms of the, the good news uh, pipeline, uh, which we haven't really got going with at the moment, but uh, where the good news is going to come from is that, firstly, we're Western Europe's most significant potash resource. Uh, we've got 5.3 billion tons. Um, Calian Salts has got just less than 2 billion tons, and they're running out of it, uh, as I said earlier, 900 million tons of saleable potash. Uh, we've got completely unencumbered licenses under our control. And because we've got all the uh, exploration data already, uh, with only seven or eight more drill holes, uh, we can convert the entire resource to uh, MI status uh, instead of the current which is inferred. So as you can see on the map here, uh, the areas in light green are former mines. The East Germany used to produce 3.5 million tons per annum of potash. It was the most significant form of uh, foreign exchange. And the pink areas are the areas uh, for which we own the licenses. And as I said, also, uh, the, the whole area is dotted with uh, drill holes, and we've got all the data from those drill holes. So the area's been mined for potash and salt for over 100 years. 
it's got an average mineralization of six meters, and compare that with some other uh, European potash projects, it's much thicker. And in fact, up to 20 meters in places, which is a, a potash miner's dream. Uh, mining would be pretty straightforward, room and pillar. Uh, processing would be uh, simple cold leaching, uh, followed by uh, evaporation and crystallization. So no chemicals uh, whatsoever in the, uh, in the process. Uh, the assets are surrounded by existing infrastructure because we're in central Germany uh, and therefore we understand from our early uh, PEAs that uh, the CapEx should be very competitive. We're in a safe jurisdiction, we're close to the European markets and not only can we supply Europe at low cost it, uh, from a logistics point of view but also with low carbon uh, associated with that supply. It was actually a good thing for us that BHP decided that market conditions were ripe uh, for further investment in the Janssen project. Our resource is actually comparable in size to Janssen, uh, just uh, about a billion tons less, but nevertheless, uh, still a very big resource. We don't think that BHP are a threat to our aspirations uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, in 2033, when BHP get up to 4.3 million tons per annum, which is their target nameplate, uh, they'll still only command 4 to 5 percent of the global market at that time, which will have reached 90 million tons of potash. Uh, the second thing is in their presentations, they are logically targeting China and uh, Brazil uh, for their exports. Uh, it's too expensive for them to bring potash into Europe. Just a couple of things about the location. Again, we are fortunate to have global potash expert consultancies, Urkusplan and KU Tech in the region. If you're not into potash, you won't have heard of them, but they are the best uh, on the planet. And returning to my point about competition, there's an old saying at Cleveland Mine, we used to say, salt doesn't travel. Uh, and uh, typically, uh, at the moment particularly, the, uh, the freight costs more than the value of the actual product. It's a, still a relatively low-cost bulk commodity. Uh, you've got to be close to the market, and the best prices are on your doorstep. And there's no way the Canadians are going to bring potash uh, into Europe, and there's little or no potash uh, comes uh, into Europe. Likewise, the Russians have to rail it a long way and bring it by sea into Hamburg, etc. Europe presently has a, a potash demand of 5.5 million tons, and the uh, production in Europe's just over three. A lot of mines have closed down the last 10 years, and Calian Salts will close down two large mines in the next eight to 10 years. So there is a widening gap uh, between uh, production and demand, and we intend to fill that initially uh, with 1 million tons per annum, which we think is a modest but achievable target. We'll be producing the most common form of potash, which is MOP, or muriate of potash. Muriate's an old-fashioned name for chloride. It's a little bit like tincture, uh, and uh, it represents 92% of potash salt uh, on the planet. Europe, as I said, will need a new supplier, and we intend to fill that. Potash prices at the moment are spiraling upwards. Uh, Post-COVID food security fears are driving corn soya indices are up by 60 or 70%. Potash spot prices are as high as $700. Some people are quoting NPVs at those numbers, but that's rather foolish. Uh, you have to look at long-term contract prices. Uh, there is a bit of a lag between contract prices and spot at the moment, but uh, as the Canadians and Russians renegotiate uh, with principally the Chinese and Indians, we expect the contract price to go from about 275 to close to 400 uh, this year. Really, for the Australians, I'd give a bit of a speech about the differences between uh, potassium chloride and potassium sulfate. They're completely different markets, but our Australian investors have been fed for the last few years on a potassium sulfate uh, diet. Uh, and as I say, it's a much smaller and much more fragile market, and newcomers would have much more difficulty coming into that market. ESG, we haven't made any bold statements yet about zero this and zero that. We wait until we do our feasibility. But if we're in Central Europe, if we're going to be building long life mines, clearly we have to subscribe to uh, the challenges that will uh, face us all uh, in order to save the planet going forward. But uh, I would refrain at this stage from making bold claims. Starter projects called Omgeberger. Uh, we've got 42 million tonnes of mineable potash in the ground there, but we've also got other projects. 
we are within 300 meters of a, a former mine, which is still accessible. Uh, and we can get in there and with, uh, extract bulk samples for geotechnical and metallurgical testing at very low cost. The alternative would be to drill from surface, which would cost several millions. Uh, we also will be, we, we, we're surrounded by 27 million cubic meters of voidage, uh, so we've got plenty of places to put our tailings, uh, which do need backfilling. We need to drill only two holes at Omgeberga in order to prove it up to an indicated resource. We cannot release a economic assessment under ASX regulations with an inferred resource we need to have indicated. So we've actually started uh, this week. We're pr uh, preparing a drill pad uh, for drilling the first hole, and we will drill the second hole early next year. We've already started preparing the scoping study uh, because much of that can be done in advance, uh, and we will uh, release all of this uh, at the end of the first quarter next year. And we do expect uh, to see a significant uplift uh, in, our, uh, in our share price at that stage. The reason why we're here, actually, by the way, today is that we're pretty unknown in Europe, and we're starting, we're, we're doing a sort of non-raise roadshow at this stage, and we're trying to uh, tell investors all about ourselves, uh, having Western Europe's largest potash inventory. The remaining three project areas we have, we're not going to sit in our hands. Uh, once we launch Omgeberger, get that to feasibility study, uh, we will start to unveil the value of the remaining resource areas. Uh, and that requires drilling only two more holes in each area, bringing them up to M&I and conducting a scoping study. So very low cost and very achievable uh, program. Uh, and we have delivered to shareholders this year, and there's no, no reason why we won't continue to deliver. So in summary, why are we a compelling investment? Well, we've got a large resource in a historic mining area. It's all been done before there. Geology, mineralogy, mining and processing are very well known. There's no history of collapse or flooding or anything silly. Uh, we are going to be using more efficient uh, extraction uh, methods. Uh, same method, but instead of drill and blast, we'll be doing our room and pillar with uh, continuous miners, flexible conveyor trains, etc. A very simple uh, processing technique. Uh, the tenure of the resources is cast iron. We own them 100%. Uh, they're perpetual. They're royalty-free. 97% of the exploration to reach M&I for such a huge resource is already done. Uh, we've got world-class geological mining and processing consultants. We've got potash and financial expertise on the board. Uh, and with all this, uh, we're in a rising tide in terms of the market. Prices are going upwards. Volumes are going upwards. Uh, with all this in our favor, I would ask you, why shouldn't you consider investing in South Hearts Potash? Thank you very much.